Welcome to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve, and we're here at the Greener Villages Learning Kitchen. And today I'm here with Aiden Fougere, a nice mixologist and a longtime volunteer mm -hmm. here at the Greener Village. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Right on. So today uh, you're going to make us some drinks, are you? Yeah. Perfect. So what are you going to make for us today, Aiden? I'm going to make a mojito, uh, like pitcher mocktail. I'm going to make a pitcher of a sangria mocktail. And then after that, I'll show you how to make a Southside Fizz as well, which is basically a mojito, but with gin instead. Okay, cool. So you're going to show us how to make the uh, the, the alcoholic version and then the other yeah, version. Yeah, like the mocktail. Yep. Perfect. Right on. So what are we making first? Uh, let's just do the sangria. That's easier. Okay, cool. Sangria. So yeah. for those who don't know, what is sangria? Yeah. Um, the way I described it yesterday when I made it myself, it's basically wine fruit punch. You okay. Know? So normally you use just a bottle of whatever wine you want. I used a Pinot Grigio yesterday. Okay. And then you soak it uh, with... Complementary fruits. I use apples and pears for mine because I like using white wine for it. Okay, no, fantastic. Yeah. So today we're making one and we're going to do the mocktail mm -hmm. version of it, right? So yep. if I'm doing a mocktail, what would I lean towards for instead of using white wine, what would I, what would yeah. I typically use? Um, for this one, I'm using uh, cranberry juice. Okay. Just cranberry juice, it's kind of tart and a little sweet like wine is. Okay. So I think that'd be a good complementary base. And the nice rose is just you know, nice and pink, so it should make the sangria look really good. So the idea is making it look pretty kind of oh yeah. deal. Okay. Oh yeah, making it look pretty. Cranberry juice is a good base for the mocktail because it's like tart. You kind of want something like that. You could also go with uh, the classic grape juice, right? You oh, can go with like right. a white grape yeah. juice or a Welsh's, mm -hmm. like that purple yeah. grape. Perfect. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's get started, boss. Cool. So what we'll do, uh, honestly, probably first, I'll just use what I have chopped. But i throw in a whole apple. And two whole pears. Uh, I'm using like Asian pears because they're supposed to be sweet, kind of like an apple, stuff like that. So you can almost make like a New Brunswick themed sangria today, right? Because we've got pears in our orchards, we've got apples in our orchards. That's true, we do, yeah. Um, we've got cranberries. Honestly, whole cranberries in a sangria would actually be probably pretty good. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah. Do you want to add your fruit first, then add your liquid, or do you? Um, does it really matter? I'm doing the fruit first, just because that way I know it's all going to be submerged. Okay. To really give it an option, or the ability, rather, to soak in, right? Cool. Is there yeah. any fruit o that you should avoid? I would probably avoid pineapples off the top of my head. Uh, that's a weird one to avoid, but f I don't think it's soak well for a sangria. I don't think the pineapple would, like... Hold firm. Um, you think it would overpower the mix as well? It might overpower, depending on what else you're putting in it. Like if you put in complementary flavors, you're making fruit punch, you can put whatever in it. Yep. I'm more concerned because part of the fun of this sangria is also eating all the fruit that's soaked, right? Gotcha. Like if you made one that had, like mine had wine, triple sec, uh, which is like an orange liqueur. And I put a little bit of vodka in it for fun. But you also want to be able to eat the fruit that's been like sitting in that mixture all night, right? So I kind of would want fruit that would hold up to soaking. No, well, that's perfect. And it, I mean, you can almost cut them anyway. You're dicing them today, oh, yeah. but I mean, if I wanted to slice them or or yeah. do anything like that, any anything like that, fantastic. You could. Uh, I like to I like to dice them like this because uh, it's easier to put them on like skewers, toothpicks, and make like a garnish out of them. And I noticed you haven't taken any of the seeds or you haven't pulled any of the pits out. Does, yeah. that, does that really matter in the long run? Not really. Um, if I put this in like a punch bowl, then I'd take the time to probably core them, seed them and all that. But we've got the spigot, so nothing should go out. Okay. What got you into mixology? Uh, I thought it was fun. I started watching Tipsy Bartender on Facebook. He was just really fun, uh, making like different party shots, drinks like that. And then I started with how to drink to learn classics. So like whiskey sours, mojitos, stuff like that. Uh, it's all self-taught. I started when two of my friends during the pandemic, they, they got a house together. Okay. First friends of the group to get a house. So we had a housewarming party. And I was like, well, for fun, can I be a bartender? And they were like, sure, whatever. And I started with three drinks. That was it. And that was two years ago. Now I can make you know, sangrias, mojitos. I'm making a new, a new York sour on my own for fun, which is like a whiskey sour just with wine on top. 
Okay, so yeah, you're so you're you're making new drinks. Oh, yeah. You're you're kind of experimenting and you're yeah. you're playing. Well, that's fun. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, next up, I'm just gonna put in the rosé uh, cranberry juice. Basically, just the base to soak all the fruit. Like yesterday, two days ago when I made mine, I used a whole bottle of white wine. Cool thing about making sangria is like I don't even drink wine, but. When you whoops, when you put it in a fruit punch, it's an easy way to drink a whole bottle of wine. Well, no, and, and it's different. It's and again, uh, when you're making a mocktail, and again, yeah. I guess I, I want to touch on that point too. Mm -hmm. Mocktails and cocktails. There's a lot of people now that are looking to, not or yeah. that don't want to, and and you don't want to be the guy that's the designated driver. Yeah. That's the guy holding the Pepsi or the yeah. ginger ale. You want to be part of the fun. Ooh. So I think that's what's really cool about these. The yeah. these non-alcoholic drinks that mimic. So this yeah. is really cool. So what are we adding next, my friend? Um, we have all our fruit in. We have our juice. Next, let's add the apple and pear uh, sparkling ciders, and that'll just give this a nice little like kind of fizziness. Oh, perfect! And then once they're soaking as well, the flavors will again meld. And so maybe. Woohoo! Well, there nice. you go. That one was under pressure. There yeah. we are. So there we are. We are ready to add that awesome. now. Thank you. And this one's what the uh, oh apple pear cider. Apple pear cider. Um. The cool thing about the mocktail option is that it gives people who maybe don't want to drink, aren't comfortable with drinking, or are the designated driver, the ability to still stay included, stuff like that. I've got friends who themselves either just don't want to drink, or normally are the DD, uh, or who just flat out don't like the taste of alcohol, but it's a good way for them to like stay included. You don't always have to have alcohol yeah. to have fun, right? Yeah. So there you exactly. go. Nice. Uh, I'm really just gonna give this a little stir with just my little bar spoon. Nice. But most of a stir as I can give it with this, mind you. So I noticed you said with your bar spoon. So yeah. the, do, do you need to have a fancy kit like this to be a bartender, or you is don't, this uh, you one don't of those? Need it. It's really more, you know, for show. Uh, the only things I think you would need as a bartender. The bar spoon is handy because it's smaller. Mine doesn't have the twist on it. Most of them do. And the twist uh, helps for things just stirring. It's all wrist motion, so it's smaller. You can do a cool trick where if I had one of my bottles there, something like that, you can hold it to the twist in the spoon and it pours down the spoon into okay. the drink. Uh, which also helps when you're using sodas and stuff to stop the carbonation. So this is what we've got right here. So we've got our sangria oh, yeah. right now. So how long can we, before we can kind of tuck into this? Um, probably like an hour at most. I let it sit. I let mine sit the other day for overnight, eight hours. It made it a day ahead of time. How long is too long? Probably three days or so. Like, you know, it starts to get soggy, mushy. No, no, great. absolutely. Yeah. So like, it's one of those things where you don't make on Monday to have on no. Friday. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Fantastic. And uh, would you pour ice into this or would you um, kind of just leave it like that? So okay. I'd probably put ice in, like maybe make it an hour before you're serving. Let the ice and the fruit and stuff sit in there and yeah, you're good. So we'll be right back with another mocktail right after this. Welcome back to Easy Eats with Chef Eve. Again, we're here with Aiden Fougere, mixologist. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks again for joining us. So you say we're no going to be working on a mojito. Yeah. Cool. So mojito without gin mm -hmm. uh, is basically just a, a tasty lime punch, isn't it? Basically, yeah. Right on. Cool. So how do we make a yeah. mojito? Uh, so basically, just going to be making a pitcher one. This time I'm going to remember the ice. But <laughs> let's see if we can get. Here we go. I'll give you a hand here. Oh, that's fine. Making cocktails is always a little bit messy when you're making them big like this, a eh? Bit. There we go. Yeah. So, some ice. We have spearmint fresh from the uh, garden out back. From our garden? That's fantastic. Yeah. So I see you just slapping it like that. Is that like a fancy technique? Or um, are you just talking it or waking it up? Or? Yeah. Well, actually, that, that is basically it. When you smack mint like that, it expresses the mint, expresses the oils, and then you really smell the mint. Okay, uh, so I'm making a single batch mojito and just shaking it, I'd muddle the mint, but I also don't have my muddler right now. Basically. But I mean, you could kind of work that in by grabbing a spoon oh. or anything like that if yeah. you don't have a muddler, right? Muddler's just a stick to squish stuff with, but oh yeah, okay. easy enough. And just a lemon and lime juice. I've got, I think, four or five lemons now, or two lemons, four limes. Um, yeah, I'm also going to put in those halves just to let them soak in the mojito 
So cool. we can add these after, or did you want to add these now? Yeah, we can just add them now. Perfect. So you've got some ahead of time. Yeah. So, um, there we go. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So I noticed that it's it it sounds a lot like uh, li like a bar ale drink. Like you said, you started with like rum and cokes or mm -hmm. gin and tonics. Uh, this is, is kind of reminiscent to one of those drinks. Um, is, I know yeah. that when I'm cooking, uh, we have different sauces, and sauces are all derived from mother sauces. Is mm -hmm. that true in bartending as well? It is. Um, the book that I use, for example, one of my self-taught books is the Cocktail Codex by Death and Company, and in that, their main philosophy is that all cocktails stem from six classic drinks. Okay. The, the Old Fashioned, the Flip, the Daiquiri, the Highball. Oh, I'm missing, I'm missing two of them. But six classic drinks. So for example, a Mojito. A mojito, I believe, would just stem from a Daiquiri. A Daiquiri being rum, lime juice, simple syrup from the Caribbean. Because, uh, you know, they just had limes and rum, right? Yeah. Um, Mojitos basically, if you think about it, a daiquiri, but with mint, right? Mint, lime juice, rum, etc. cetera. Uh, next up, honestly, next up, I just need the club soda, please. Club soda? Oh. Right here. Um, and this. There you are. Um, but the cool thing about it is, yeah, for example, the other day, I was making a mojito by myself, and the nice thing about when you're a bartender or a mixologist uh, the only person who knows when you mess up is yourself. Yep. Because I made my mojito, I didn't put mint in it, and I was like, well, I guess I have a daiquiri instead. So you can still kind of... Oh, okay, so now I see. So the daiquiri, you would take the ice that you have in it and blend it so it would be almost like the slushy in, yeah. in the daiquiri. Cool, oh I, yeah. never really re I never realized that before. But a lot of people do blended daiquiris. I do mine shaken, yep. just shaken uh, with the ice. But anyway, you can do whatever. So you can also make, and I mean, I've seen it, uh, uh, blueberry mojitos and oh yeah. strawberry mojitos. So I've done those too. I so all I would syrup. do is take my blueberries and toss them in, or Ooh. my strawberries or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the only thing we're going to need is like a little sweetener. So we made honey syrup with honey from the food bank itself. We're going to put in, honestly, for a pitcher like this, probably four ounces. So we're looking at, what, how big are those? Four liters? Uh, Two liters. No, they're about four liters. Enough to like give it, you know, a sweetener. Honestly, I probably put in. That might have been four. So uh, four ounces. We'll do one more. Why not? Four so again, five. so to taste, right? Yeah. Give it something a little sweeter. Big stir for a little spoon. Mojito. You were saying Caribbean and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what part of the Caribbean is the mojito from? Do you know? Uh, that is from Cuba itself. National drink of Cuba. Uh, some other really cool Caribbean drinks. I like gimlets. Gimlets are basically a gin daiquiri. So same thing. Uh, here you go. Perfect. We'll so over. just lime juice, gin instead of rum, and then simple syrup if you're making the alcoholic version. If you're not, then probably just limeade, really. You know, okay. lime, lime and simple syrup, uh, sugar water. Are there any cock other cocktails that you can make can in batch. big quantities like this that you can share with friends or uh, share barbecues and parties? Oh, yeah. There's a bunch uh, for, oh, what would I even batch? I'd probably batch daiquiri. You okay, know, the, yeah. With the rum, lime juice. It's basically the same, just about the mint. Um, you could batch, I suppose if I wanted to, I could batch a whiskey sour. Uh, that's just, you know, bourbon, uh, lemon juice, simple syrup. For mocktails, uh, I'd probably, uh, lemonade, because that's, I mean, th that's basically what we made, right? Lemonade yeah, I there. guess so, yeah. Um, the sangria, yeah, it's kind of like a thing for making, like, big batch pitcher drinks like that. You said when you started out doing this for friends who had gotten their house and stuff yeah. like that, uh, do you offer your services or is this just what you do for friends and family? And yeah, uh, that's what I do for friends and family now. I definitely do. I would definitely am open to doing it for parties. I've got my own like Instagram and my own email that cool. people can like message me on to inquire about that. And it's also I've got pictures of the drinks I've made too. Nice, cool. No, this is kind of a always interested me because yeah. I, when we went to culinary school, mm -hmm. uh, there was also there's like 
a month and a half that we took yeah. a mixology class, but yeah. it was. It was to learn those basic drinks. Mm. I didn't know about the mother drinks and the, mm. the derivatives. It was just basically, here are the basic cocktails that most everybody like. Yeah. Here's how to pour a beer properly. Mm -hmm. You're a chef, away you go, yep. right? So uh, it, it's kind of neat to see that. And again, it's developing because yeah. I'm, you can see that in different bars, there's different cocktails, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. That's so Yeah, and like even if you go you know, to two or three different bars and order the same drink, they might make it two or three different ways. So many options, you know? You can look at one bottle and make four different drinks off of that. So you can kind of let your creativity fly with it. We'll be back right after this for one last cocktail with Aiden. Yeah. Welcome back to Easy Eats. I'm Chef Yves Deschain, and again, I have uh, Aiden Fougere, mixologist, mm -hmm. with me today. Mm -hmm. Aiden, before we get you to uh, show us your skills on yeah. the last cocktail, mm -hmm. I want to touch base on how uh, you've been volunteering with us yeah. at the Greener Village since since forever. I mean, it's you've uh, I think probably since I was at least four. I think. Four, yeah. Oh. You're, you're well. That's it. Is uh, your grandfather started, mm -hmm. and now yeah. you're. And now your dad's our yeah. is our is our client intake manager, yeah. so and that's fantastic. They celebrated his twenty five years, what, two months ago? I Something think? like that, yeah. yeah. And that's really cool. And I like that. You know, like you know, my papa started back when the food bank was on uh, Graham Avenue. So like back in the old location. I've been there, I volunteered there when I was a kid. It was mainly like, you know, handing out boxes of craft dinner to volunteers, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, then like, you know, dad works there and then after I graduated I started working here. I did I volunteered three years full time uh, before I had to leave and you know got a full time job there, but being able to do that off and on for the entirety of my life is actually really awesome. No, and it's fantastic. Great yeah. help. I mean, it really does uh, let you get a beat of the city and oh, yeah. their needs, their wants, and yeah. and yeah, it must uh, and the sense of accomplishment, I guess, there to be able there's to. A, yeah, there's actually a big sense of accomplishment with that. Uh, and the cool thing, especially when I'm doing you know, mixology, bartending too, is that through volunteering here and just the, you know, wealth of people you can talk to in an hour, you can talk to like anybody in a bar now, if you can talk to anybody in the hallway for an hour. Well, that's it. Dealing yeah. with people, it doesn't matter what setting yeah. you, you, you get to interact. Yeah. Right on. Cool. So what is the last drink you're going to be making us for yeah. today? Uh, the last one I'm making is a Southside Fizz. Uh, this one I'm making, I thought I saw it online. It seemed fun. And the cool thing too is I get to use like a present I got. So I actually called the distiller himself, Joe, for Devil's Keep. Cool. And I went to his distillery. He gave me a tour of his place. This gin is so fresh. I actually saw him pour it like from the vat into the bottle. Oh, that's pretty cool. That was. That's was, very cool. I was cool. really excited about that. So I'm going to use a little bit of that. Uh, I also got a bottle of his vodka. You don't normally put vodka in a Southside Fizz. I might because I have it for the fun of it. And that's also the other fun of being... I'm excited and the bartender is, you know, you get to have fun with it too. You get to see what works, what doesn't. Perfect. This one's a shake and drink. Now, so Southside Fizz, you say. So yep. is, this a, is this a Fredericton based drink? It is not. No. Okay. I'm not sure where it got its name from or it originated from uh, entirely, but it looked fun online. It's basically, it's a mojito, except instead of rum, we use the gin. And that's also kind of why I wanted to make it, is it's the same thing, sub an ingredient. Okay. Yeah. So if you do and gin for the south, you can cut the vodka for the north, you can have the south side fizz and then the oh north side true. sizzle. <laughs> you know what? I never actually thought about that. That's a cool idea. There I you like go. Uh, we're all going to need some mint for this as well, so that's also the fun of it. Okay. So I'll just get some of that ready. But basically, we're just going to need the mint, probably oh, half a dozen mint leaves, and then lemon juice and lime juice both, so a little bit different from a mojito. And we're just going to shake it up all together with some ice. Are you adding a simple syrup to this one? Uh, yes, I'm going to add more of the honey syrup. Perfect. So let's touch on simple syrup. So yeah. simple syrup we use in baking all the time. It's just to moisten cakes and mm -hmm. things like that. So is it the same recipe, equal parts uh, sugar yep. and water? Equal parts sugar, water. Uh, I'm using honey because uh, you were so kind to give me honey from the food bank itself. But you can use like basically any sweetener for it. So when I made my blueberry and strawberry mojitos, I made my own strawberry and blueberry syrup. Okay. That's how I learned uh, through myself that day that blueberries are high in pectin, and I made jam. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was good, though. But yeah, equal parts, sugar, water. Uh, so I did one-to-one. -one. Same with the honey syrup. Uh, the cool thing, and very important when you're making drinks like this, if you're working in an actual event or bar setting, always use 
your non-alcoholic ingredients first. That way, if you mess anything up, you're not actually out any of you know, your stock. Lime juice done. I'll use this, that's fine. Um, yeah, so an ounce, ounce and a half of lime juice. Probably only gonna use half of this lemon, so probably half an ounce of lemon juice, if I had to guess. Okay. Easy way to tell. So this is a jigger as well, by the way. Basically, it's what every bartender uses to measure their liquids. The little half is half an ounce. Top is one ounce. So it's just a fancy shot glass. Basically, yeah. Yeah, right on. Fancy spout. This time I'm going to use, so we're going to do a full ounce of gin. I'll just do half an ounce of vodka. Basically a splash for fun. Right on. Well, you're getting that done. I'm going to yeah. start pouring us yes, a couple. You wouldn't think it, but mixing drinks is actually kind of thirsty work. It, it, it can be, can it? There cool. we are. Ice in the shaker. Excellent. Other very important things, I've messed this up before. Little shaker into the big. I've messed that up before. It makes a big mess. Let's take it this way. Is there a fancy way to shake it, Aiden? Is there a length of time that you should be shaking? People say, like, I heard one guy say, uh, shake the soul out of it. Okay. Uh, most drinks you shake for, like, probably 30 seconds. Uh, one drink, the Ramus Gin Fizz. I've never made one myself. You shake it for 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And but and most of that show, but the reason is when you pour it, you get, because it's an egg white, so you get a foam uh, puck. And then when you pour club soda, I've seen people get a puck like to there above a glass. Okay, so yeah, you, so you're basically making a meringue is why you're shaking oh it yeah. for 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, other than that, for fancy shaking, like, I do it one-handed. Uh, so a there's, there's no over-shaking involved then? Not really. Right on. There we go. All right. Then, take your strainer. Cool thing about bar strainers, they just sit over top. There you go, and I noticed that always when we pour a cocktail, is this one of those cocktails where you add the ice to it afterwards as well? Um, yeah, most drinks, some you pour onto a rock. So one, for example, an old-fashioned is just bourbon, uh, simple syrup, and then bitters, and you stir it in a mixing glass. You don't shake that one, because uh, there's no like juice or citrus in it. And then that one you serve over a big rock or ice cube to let it like sit. Uh, kind of dilutes, because ethanol will melt the ice. That's also presentation. Okay, cool. And then the only other thing I really want to make for this, there's some nice little uh, mint sprigs. So we're going to set one, set two. I wanted to touch on that as well because yeah. uh, uh, garnishes for drinks are just as important as garnishes on food. Mm -hmm. It elevates the presentation, doesn't it? It really makes it appetizing. It does. We eat and drink with our eyes, so the prettier the drink, the more appetizable yeah. it is. And some garnishes, too, uh, will also help to enhance the drink or change like slightly the pr flavor profile. So like a rim on a Caesar yeah. or on a... Yeah, or if you do like a martini, like yeah. a lemon twist, you, you kind of spray the lemon oil into the martini, you get like a hint of lemon when you drink it. Cool. And then all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to score a lime. Cut it sideways. Now we've got a Southside Fizz. Non-alcoholic drinks for the kids, exactly. for the people who don't, yeah. and then the alcoholic drinks for us responsible adults. That's so right. Thank you so much, thank and you. cheers. Cheers.